then the final result um, is pesticide residues. Um, so as you might expect, unless you are an organic skeptic, um, pesticides were detected less frequently in organic crops. There is always around 10% of organic crops where you can detect pesticide residues. Um, any idea why that might be? Spray drift is, is, is a big, big problem for organic farmers. A very big problem for small organic farmers. I, uh, I'm farming again. I've got some, uh, a field of olive trees in, in Crete. A big field for, for, cre for Cretan comparison, two, two hectares. It's a big field in, uh, in Crete. And uh, the outer rows of my olive trees I can't use for organic production because they automatically get uh, contaminated by the organophosphorus sprays my neighbors use. There's also some pesticides which are so persistent that you can still detect them after five years organic, of organic management in certain crops, particular perennial crops. So if you switch from conventional to organic apple production and you have used persistent pesticides like organochlorine pesticides before, they get stuck in the wood, they're slowly released, and you can detect them with those very sensitive detection methods we have nowadays, even five years after you've switched from using pesticides to not using pesticides. There is differences between types of um, uh, crops. So in fruit, you have the highest proportion of conventional samples uh, contaminated with pesticides because to protect your fruits, to comply with current supermarket standards, you, you tend to have to apply pesticides very close to harvest, which gives you an automatic residues um, after harvest. With vegetables, um, the, the proportion of conventional vegetables um, uh, contaminated is much lower. Most vegetable, or much larger proportion of UK vegetable production uh, also is done uh, closer to the consumer but pesticides in general, you can stop using them much um, further away from harvest. On the pesticide data, I want to say two things. First of all, it's amazing how few studies have been carried out comparing pesticide residues in organic and conventional crops. The only really large study has been done in the US. Everything else is, is hundreds of samples rather than the ten thousands of, uh, of samples they've tested in or they've analyzed in, in the US. But the few studies which did it, the conventional pesticide residues were always 10 to 100 times higher. So that gives you an idea about um, the level of difference where you had pesticides detected in both organic and conventional crops. And why is the frequency of pesticide residues lower in organic crops? Well, basically, um, that comes back to organic farmers not being allowed to use them. And looking at the data, it also seems as if organic farmers stick to the rules, because otherwise you would find more pesticides. Have you analysed the organic pesticides? Because the toxicity of organic pesticides is very often higher than synthetic. The, 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 one, um, the, the two uh, pesticides that um, would uh, show up uh, in the analysis is sulfur and copper. And you cannot detect any significant differences in copper and sulfur content um, in the, in the meta-analysis. You, you would not expect to because the copper concentrations permitted in organic farming are very low, 6 kilograms per hectare. That's not enough to show up as a, as a difference in concentration compared to the, what a the, what the crop picks up in copper in the soil uh, anyway. Um, copper is toxic um, when you expose to it in, in you know, in, in concentrated form. You know, a farmer handling it, it's, it's, it's toxic. But the amount you spray on crops um, uh, can never raise the levels in the crop uh, to a degree uh, that eating it becomes... Uh, makes so it toxic. doesn't have a cumulative response then? No, it hasn't got a cumulative response with respect to the concentration that you have in the crop. In fact, we could do with a little bit more copper in our diet. We, 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 shouldn't, we, sh we shouldn't handle it in concentrated form, that, that's dangerous to the farmer. But, um, you know, we, we have a little bit too little copper in our diet. That's why we eat min mineral supplements. There is one um, other uh, group of pesticides which are used in organic farming, um, 
which you could class chemically as um, uh, uh, synthetic pesticides, the, the pyrethroids mm. and rotenol. Mm. Um, the pyrethroids that are permitted in organic farming are extracted from carnations, so are natural, and that's the rationale for, for being allowed to be used. Um, they are um, highly toxic pesticides, yeah. just like the synthetic yeah. pyrethroids. Um, and they are used in both animal production uh, to cop uh, stop animal parasites and in plant production for certain insect pests. Now, those pesticides used in organic farming are, from, an, um, from a um, human health risk point of view, uh, have exactly the same level of concern as the synthetic pyrethroids that are used in um, conventional farming. In, in fact, the acute toxicity of uh, pyrethroids is exactly the same. So, uh, it's, it's, it's slightly higher. It is, yeah. Um, so, um, th that you have to keep in mind. But in, they are used in very, very few production systems. So, they don't turn up and influence these overall pesticide uh, residue data. But it, it, it's a question organic farming has to ask itself. Can we afford uh, to leave them? Rotenone has now been phased out. But at the moment, I don't think uh, organic farming specifically um, livestock production uh, could cope with maintaining current uh, animal welfare standards without the use of high risk. And the pesticides, are they in the crop or are they on the surface? And how much do you wash off if you wash your food? It's a very, it's a very, good, it's, it's a very good question. Um, and I'm giving you a typical scientific answer, ac academic answer. That depends. <laughs> which, which I always find extremely annoying. No, a lot of a lot of pesticides these days are systemic, so it doesn't really matter uh, on whether uh, you wash the fruit or not. You get them anyway. The um, the pesticides which are um, protective pesticides, they stay on the surface of your cereal, and the closer uh, to harvest you spray. Uh, your crops, the more of it is on the surface as opposed to the inside. That, that's just common sense. Um, in cereals, which contribute a lot to our pesticides, um, the pesticide whack we get, um, you get more in whole grain um, in whole grain cereals than you get uh, in polished cereals, because um, we spray most of the. Um, pesticides that we have residues of close to harvest and they remain on the surface even if they're systemic and, and could potentially go in inside. So one of the, um, um, one of, one of the big problems um, with, a, with a more modern type of pesticides is that they are systemic and the old um, re recommendation from the uh, Food Standard Agency uh, which said wash your fruit and you can reduce your pesticide run. Basically, it doesn't work anymore. It worked during the times when we mainly have contact pesticides.